hands high. They're telling him not to counter punch. So I uh, just got home after speaking to Glyn Rhodes. The first interview for this channel it went really well, I thought. A uh, really nice guy, very friendly, very open with his answers, happy to talk about anything. We did speak about a few things, uh, but mainly it was about Scott Westgarth. For those of you that don't know, uh, Scott Westgarth was one of Glyn's fighters who uh, died in 2018 after a 10 round fight in Doncaster. I spoke to Glyn about this, about what it was like for him uh, during the event afterwards, how he coped with it, how the media dealt with it, and again, really open with his you know, mental health struggles um, and what he went through at the time. It's a great way to start my channel off, I think. Uh, I thought it was a great interview. Uh, I hope you guys think the same. So without further ado, Glim Rhodes. So where are we right now? We what? are at Sheffield Boxing Centre, which is part of the Burton Street Community Foundation, which is an old school uh, which closed down many years ago as a school. When we first actually came here, I think about 1995, we were the first people in here. The only people who were in this building at that time were pigeons and glue sniffers. <laughs> the pigeons are still here. We got rid of the glue sniffers. So just talk to me a bit about what, what goes on here and why, why it's so important to you. Um, well, in my bit, this, the only part that I'm really concerned about is the boxing gym. You know, the, the school, there's lots of things going off in the school. Uh, it's a great thing for, there's a lot of disabled kids come here. In here we just have the boxing, we've been doing the boxing here since, like I say, I retired in 1993, probably been here since 95. Mainly it's just boxing, um, you know, we do a lot of circuit classes for people generally, general key fit, but majority of the time it's just boxing. So, in in 2018, one of one of your fighters, Scott Westgarth, yeah. he he, um, he died, didn't he, after, yeah. after a boxing match? Just, Talk to me about that, about what that was like and what, what you sort of went through at the time. And how For me, it. at the time, it, it didn't like, it was a bit surreal because you don't, you live in the moment, but you're not actually aware of what's going on at the time, you know, because he won the fight. He was a, he was a perfect um, boxer. He was a nutritionist, he was a dietitian, he was a fitness fanatic, so he did everything right. We were the underdogs, so to speak, at Doncaster Dome, boxing a kid called uh, Dex Spellman who were a lot more, he were a local kid but he were expected to win. Anyway, Scott pulled off a terrific victory and won. No, no complaints after. Um, at one point, I keep telling everybody this, he climbed out of the ring after doing a 10 round fight and he went like this, which is not a <laughs> uncommon thing to do after you've just done 10 rounds, but somebody actually took a picture as he were like this. And then, he, you know, it went around social media saying, oh look, he, were having he wasn't, he just, he kind of like did this. He got out of the ring, he walked back to the changing rooms. Uh, a little bit wobbly on his legs, uh, but again, he just done 10 rounds, so we weren't overly concerned. You know, you guys just done 10 rounds, you're gonna be a bit wobbly. And he fell in the last round, I thought he might have pulled his neck. We stayed in the changing rooms for a while, and the doctor said, look, I want you to go to hospital. Just as a precaution. This is something that's happened many times with me, so I weren't overly cautious again. Uh, and then we got in the ambulance, on the way to the hospital and then all hell broke loose. Um, obviously you know what happened. Uh, he, he, he died a couple of days after, you know, they transferred him from Doncaster Royal Infirmary to the Allenshire. Um, and, I, and after that, it was just it was just unbelievable after that, you know. One minute you're having your guy's hand raised and he's been, you know, announced champion and winner. And within a short period of time, you know, you're in hospital and a doctor's telling you that he's died. So you, you go from here as high as you can to being as low as you can't, you can't go no poss possibly any lower. Um, and it was horrendous. And then there's the aftermath and blame and you know looking for answers and things like that. And it, was, it was just a horrendous time at the time. So yeah, it weren't, it weren't a nice time. Not just for me, for Scott's girlfriend, his family, his mom, his dad, everybody, everybody in the gym even. Um, it, was, it was just a, just not a very nice time, full stop. What was the feeling around the gym after that? Was it was it quite subdued for quite yeah, a long time? Yeah, do doom and gloom, you know. Um, Scott didn't obviously officially die until, you know, he kept him in hospital. He donated all his organs, which just saved lots of people's lives, which is an unbelievable thing to do. So, you know, he wasn't officially declared dead until I don't know, a couple of days after. But, you know, you're waiting. The doctor more or less told us, you know, he's, he's, he's dead. But, uh, I think what they do is basically, because he's donated his organs, they kept him in hospital until uh, a suitable donor was in need. So yeah, then like, immediately straight after that, it was a bit of a nightmare to tell you the truth. Um, like I said, we shut the gym. 
and flowers start to pile up outside the door, people bringing flowers and you couldn't get in the building. Um, and it were, it were horrible. And I mean, how long did you shut the gym for? A lot of kids rely on this place, you know, to come here for, for, their, own, for their own sanctuary. Yeah. You know, it did go through my mind, you know, packing, packing. Again, but I don't think that would do any good. We all know how, how dangerous boxing is. Me closing the gym down, it's going to affect all the kids who come here and train. So yeah, it was a bad time straight after. I remember somebody saying to me at a show once, you do realise this will go on two years. And I went, no, two years, there's nothing, nothing suspicious going on. Uh, and yeah, two years, that's how long it took before we were in court. And then we all had to appear in court and that was horrendous. Scott's family. Uh, so in that period of time, two years that it took to get to court, Lots of things happened and uh, it weren't good, it weren't all good things. Uh, me personally as well, it weren't all good for me. Uh, I kind of like spiralled a bit out of control. And not out of control, probably out of control is the wrong word. But in my head, I was spiralling out of control. Um, which, which basically finished off me ending up going to see a, psych a psychiatrist because I thought I was cracking up. Um, but I'm alright now, you know. It's been it's been a few years now. We've got we've gone gone through something you're never going to forget. You're never going to get over. Something you just learn to live with. Like I said, one minute you're in a ring having your hand raised as a winner, and the next thing you're in an ambulance watching your fight. Uh, you know, fighting for his life. Um, and then a couple of hours later, you're in Allenshire Hospital, being told by a doctor that he's died uh, on the operating table. So it's all a bit it's all a bit too much to take on board. Even even now when I'm talking about it, it's a bit surreal. Did that really happen? Yeah, it did it. It's a bit surreal. So um, yeah, it weren't about it. weren't a good time then. But like I said, that was, that's what it is. Do you think there's still quite a lot of stigma around not just men's mental health but all mental health in sports and especially a sport that's as, as tough and yeah. macho as boxing? Yeah, don't forget boxers. We're we're hard men. We're tough guys. We're climbing the ring with a pair of shorts on. You know, bearing your chest, with, so we have to put this act on that. You know, you're not scared, we, but we are scared. You know, you walk to the centre of the ring, you look in the guy's eyes, and you try not to look. You don't want to see no fear, and if he looks away, you feel, oh, I feel. But there's more. You know, everybody's scared. Anybody who says they're not scared when they climb the boxing ring, I think they're lying. Uh, different people handle it different ways. Uh, the mental health side of it, yeah, we need to start talking about it a bit more, especially in boxing. We're not tough guys. We just, yeah, it takes. It takes a brave man to get in that ring, but you know, anybody who says that they're not scared wants to get in that ring, they're lying, because it's a scary, scary place, but you disguise it, you act cocky, you act like, like you're all right, but you're not. Um, so yeah, it's, it needs to be discussed a little bit more, uh, men's mental health. Do you think, even with everything that's happened with Scott and a lot of the other deaths we've seen in boxing, do you think boxing still does more good than it does harm oh, overall? Yeah, you've only got to see the kids who come in here on a weekly basis, seven days a week we're open. Uh, what would these kids be doing if they didn't come here? You know, be outside causing problems or, you know, I, I always hung around on street corners when I was a kid and it seemed it was more exciting to be doing naughty things than it were doing, sat at home doing your own work. Kids these days, you know, with gangs and knife crime and guns, it, you know, you need kids in here doing this. You know, whether they're boxing or just training or learning a bit of discipline or just feeling that comradeship of being part of a building, you know, a gym like this. You know, you've got, you got, we're all here for the same reasons. You know, we're all we're all boxers. We're all training to be boxers, or we're all we're all striving to get to the same place. So, yeah, boxing out. You know, when you think of that, the tragedies, boxing outweighs. You know, good rather than bad. How do you feel about the way that the media went about reporting Scott Westcott's death? You mentioned the head and the hands thing. How do you think? Yeah, the media I, in general went personally out? straight away. I thought the media were bang out of order. I got home that thought that morning from the Allenshire Hospital and the reporters outside my house. Uh, I thought that's a bit um, insensitive, you know. Uh, I think about eight o'clock at morning, I see these guys walking up my drive. I looked out the window, I see my next door neighbour with the wheelie bin and these guys, and I thought, who are these? Eight o'clock at morning, reporters. So I think they're a bit insensitive there. Um, yeah, I, I understand they've got a job to do as a reporter, but you know, to be at my house at eight o'clock when I'd only just come home from the hospital, I thought that was very bang out of order. That you thought, bloody hell. Give me some chance to come home and let the dust settle, if you know what I mean. Let me take on board what's actually just happened. Uh, and what you could have done, what I could have done is I could have, I were in a, a bad place, so I were upset, so I could have said something that later on I'd have regretted saying. So I thought, you know what, don't say nothing. Don't just keep your mouth shut, don't say anything. Uh, people who are going to say anything first is probably Scott's mum and dad, 
and his girlfriend and I'm way down the list so I just I didn't say nothing really. Do you think that was partly what contributed to your mental health deteriorating and Yeah, you know, you away? could say that because I was keeping a lot of things in, you know, you, you, you're hiding it and you're coming here and acting like everything's all right. And this went on for a period of two years, uh, over two years, so you're acting all right, like, yeah, everything's all right, but it's not all right. You know, you're going home and you've got these demons in your head. I split up with my girlfriend who I've been going out with for a long time at the same time. Not saying Scott's death had anything to do with that or contributed to that at all. Um, but you know, just when you needed somebody there, you know, to put your arm around you and say everything's going to be all right. I found myself at home on my own. My kids were away from home. Uh, and that's when the cogs start turning in your head. So yeah, it was a bad time for me personally, that. It was after a fight with Dex Spellman, like you yeah. said. Do you have much um, yeah, to do with Dec Scott? Yeah, I've seen Dex loads of times, seen him around. He, we did, uh, every year we do a walk around Dan Flask where Scott used to run. So every year we do a walk on the anniversary of Scott's death. Uh, Deck turned up there for the last few years. I've seen Deck loads of times. Like I say, he's in the same game as me. So yeah, I've seen Deck quite often. Do you think that the fact that you've sort of had each other and you've all had like a support network, like with the gym, do you think that sort of helped yeah. with oh, like, God, talking yeah. about yeah, it? Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. No, Scott were a big part of this gym. Um, so, you know, when you, we, 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 apart from me being in the ambulance, everybody else went through the same thing, you know. You're a big part of the gym. All the guys trained with him. You were a funny guy. Um, you know, you were a big part of the gym. So I would, I would imagine it's had an effect on other people as well, not just me. But like I said, when, you, when we did that walk around down Flas on Scott's anniversary, it was packed. So I can't tell you how many people turned up, decks turned up. So yeah, it was good. It was, it was, if, if you want to call it good, it was a, it was a testament to Scott's popularity, if you know what I mean, that that many people turned up because he was a good kid. We also did a fun day uh, shortly after Scott died at Hillsborough Leisure Centre to try and raise some money for uh, Scott's girlfriend. And we did raise quite a lot of money. It's a testament to Scott how many people turned up, how many people donated uh, raffle auction prizes uh, and how many people were willing to help. You know, the sun were out, we had bouncy Cassie, it was brilliant. Uh, it was, like I said, it, it, testament to what a nice kid Scott were. Do you feel like in a way with keeping the gym open and bringing up all the amateurs through and the people that turn professional, you sort of carrying on his legacy and representing him through the gym? Yeah, you got to do that. We've got a big banner out there, you know, and it'll stay there forever. You know, and it, it, I'll show you. I'll show you after it's a picture of Scott after he won the fight with his arm in there, <clears throat> and he said the quote was, "I'll I'll do it just because I love doing it. Win, lose, all draw. I'll just carry on doing it." And that's the kind of um, message Scott gave out. I do it because I enjoy it. Yeah, Scott's legacy will just live on while ever we I suppose. Yeah. What do you think is the most important thing that boxing does for people? Uh, there's, you can't put your finger on one thing. What I could say, what he does, you know. He, he, there's the comradeship, there's the discipline, there's the, de the dedication. It, there's so many things that boxing does. Like I said, not even guys who go on to be professionals. Everybody who comes in this gym, one way or another, will benefit. So it's a social club. You're meeting other guys from, you know, from different circles, different religions, different colour, different race. So you're meeting different people. Everything that we're doing here is just like the world out there. You know, we've got to learn to get along with each other. You know, we've got white guys, black guys. Muslim guys, uh, Christian, we've got everybody and everybody gets along, you know, so if the world could be like that, it'd be a better place. It's my final question now, and I'm going to ask this in every video I do. Um, how, how would you like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as somebody who just helped other people. You know, a lot of people have helped me throughout my career mainly. You know, if I'd have never met Brendan Ingle, I don't know what I'd be doing. Uh, there's so many people that have helped me along my journey. That, you know, I can't begin to name them, but you know. So that's what I try to do myself: help people out. If you can be, if you can help somebody, help them. If it's no, if it's no cost to me, you know, and I can help somebody out, I'll do it. So I just like to be remembered as I can't say a good box <laughs> because <laughs> I weren't that good. Um, I just like to be remembered as somebody who you know helped other people, and that's it.